I'm Emma Spears and I run Ballyhoo PR. Um, we're based in Lamport in Northamptonshire. We help small to medium sized businesses with their uh, PR and their marketing and help them to share their stories and their successes and raise their profile and get them in front of a whole new audience. Yeah, so I started Ballyhoo PR in May 2016. Um, at the time I was working for a, another PR agency and um, prior to that I'd been working at Northamptonshire Chamber of Commerce so I'd, I'd helped a lot of small to medium sized businesses with their PR and help them to yeah, raise their profile and just shout about the stuff that they were doing. And um, then when I went to work for a PR agency, I was working with some really big names. And um, one thing I found was that I didn't really get the same buzz that I got with working with small businesses. So there were lots of kind of uh, approval processes to go through. Um, and then also when you landed some coverage, if um, I remember landing a piece in the Financial Times, for example, and I was really excited by it. And then the client was, great, thanks. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, I just kind of felt this need um, to work with the smaller businesses again, where you can really make a difference and an impact and change the course, the direction, help them with their growth, all of their ambitions, get their key messages out, all of that sort of thing. So that coincided with, personally, I had two young boys and um, yeah, they got chicken pox quite close together. And um, I'd used up all my holiday, all my time off in lieu, and then the second one got it. And it was just like, oh no. And I quickly realised that I'd been in PR at that point, sort of about 15 years or so. And um, I thought, I still want to do this. I still want to have a career. It's very much who I am and it's an industry I'm passionate about. But what I'm doing now doesn't fit with a young family. So yeah, that was kind of the catalyst. I thought, okay, I'll do it for myself. I'll find my own clients and then I can work with these smaller businesses again. So, um, yeah, that was my why, really. I kind of wanted something that fitted in with myself and my family, my career ambitions, my identity, all of that stuff, because I think as women, we're guilty of losing our identity um, because we do have to either reduce our hours or take a different job, a sidestep or whatever, and it's just so unfair, really. So um, this was a way of being able to kind of help me personally, help businesses in the area. Um, yeah, and that was kind of my startup story. first client I got, um, it was actually a leaflet was the first job that I got asked to do, I remember, um, because I'd said that I do sort of PR and copywriting services. So yeah, it was a local sports club, um, Corby Smash Table Tennis Centre. They approached me about doing a leaflet for them, so that was the first piece of work I did. And then I worked with a graphic designer who I knew, and we pulled that project together and it was a bit like, yeah, that's my first piece in, in the, the, the bag, so to speak. And then... Um, yeah, and then I think the next job was a website I was asked to write the copy for and it just gradually grew and then started sort of networking and telling people what I was doing and yeah, thankfully that was nearly eight years ago and it's just kind of grown and grown and grown. I started out um, self-employed, relatively low setup costs, I was quite lucky there, so I didn't need to invest in any kind of machinery or premises, it was literally a phone and a laptop to get started. Um, and then I paid for a website and then started networking and got some clients in. And um, yeah, I kind of did that self-employed working from home for a couple of years. And then, um, then I got my first office space in Corby. That was a serviced office and that was 2018 I did that. And um, that was really good as well, quite supportive to have other businesses around. Um, and then I employed my first employee. So going from... Um, employed to self-employed to then employer was a bit of a journey and I would say I've, I've learned quite a lot through that um, and thankfully there's lots of um, people that you can outsource that sort of help to as well so HR specialists that can come in and help you with the interview process um, contracts and all of that stuff so yeah I have had some help there from sort of local businesses so that's really good um, yeah, so then I took on my first employee in 2018. Fast forward to 2024, we're now a team of four. We've got these offices in Lamport, which we moved into in 2021. Um, so that was a big achievement, actually, because um, we'd obviously gone into COVID with this serviced office in Northampton, a team of two. Um, sorry, in Corby, not Northampton, in a team of two. And then, um, yeah, COVID hit, we couldn't get into the office, so we went remote. But then we did start to grow 
So we employed two more people whilst working remote. And then when 2021 came along, it was the world's opening up a little bit. We haven't worked together as a team together. Um, so yeah, we got this office, which is a converted barn on the sort of grounds of Lamport Hall. So it's just, yeah, it's really nice. That was a big achievement for me getting this office and then having the team t come together and now we operate in a, a hybrid model. So we work from home some days. We're always in the office on a Thursday. We have a team day. And um, yeah, that's kind of where we're up to now. Well, we would work with you, first of all, to get to really understand your business and know who you're trying to target. We would then think about where we would find those people, so what magazines they would be reading, what events they're going to, what websites they might be looking at. Um, and then we would craft a message, so it could be a press release, it could be pitching an opinion piece to a magazine. Um, it could be looking at your own marketing and the stuff that you publish yourself, so your social media management, your website copy, um, blogs, um, SEO even. We're not SEO experts, but we write for SEO, so we would get to know what your strategy is there and implement it. Um, digital PR is a brilliant way to um, kind of get yourself across a load of uh, websites with really good authority, good ranking, news websites that are updated regularly, have great readership numbers. Um, yeah, so we can help you get featured on those with links back to your own website um, and just help people to find out about you. you. You have your own kind of audience and your own supporters, but what we do would help you to reach people outside of those groups. Um, yeah, your target audience so that they get to find out who you are, what you're doing and how you can help them. So yeah, when I started the business back in 2016, um, initially I just wanted to go freelance and I was looking at signing up to some freelance websites and um, sort of found that none of them would really keep me in a career, you know, they, they don't pay a lot of money. So I thought, I know what I'll do, I'll go out on LinkedIn and I'll just say, this is what I'm up to now. Does anybody want any PR support? And then I started to think, well, actually, I probably need a website. And then I thought, I don't really want it to be emmaspears.co.uk. <laughs> so I need a name. So, yeah, I literally just started, like, looking up different names and found that lots of them were taken. And then um, I hit upon the idea to go through a thesaurus. So I started going through and I looked up and I think um, Ballyhoo came up as meaning to generate a buzz or publicise something. And I thought, I like that, to create a ballyhoo, to generate a buzz and, um, yeah, to publicise something. So I thought, that says exactly what we do. And then um, I kind of had my eye on growth as well and thought, if I am going to set up a business, I don't want it to be all about me with my name in it. So, um, yeah, it, I was kind of future-proof in it as well. I love the people. I think being self-employed and um, doing what we do, working with a lot of different clients, we get to travel about, we get to meet with them and build some really good relationships. So an example of this is there was a local award ceremony last night. Um, we put forward a lot of our clients for awards and everyone that won um, sent me a text and just sort of said thank you, how much it means to them. And again, you wouldn't get that with like the big businesses. So it was just a real good feel factor and it, it makes you think this is what I really enjoy about my job is um, getting to know people, becoming an extension of their business, part of their team and helping them to celebrate their achievements, shout about their successes, share their stories um, and just grow with them. So yeah we've been on our own growth journey and a lot of the clients that we're with now started with us sort of six, seven, eight years ago. So that's been really good to watch them grow and sort of chronicle their success through PR so we can talk about you know when they take on their employees when they launch a new product or service when they move into bigger offices and and then enter these awards that high growth employer of the year and all of that stuff so it's yeah kind of going along with them for the journey and being there at every every kind of milestone or success they have and shouting about it for them um, I really enjoy that. Well, I was doing award entries before I started Ballyhoo. I was doing them in my sort of previous role. Um, so, yeah, for the last eight years, we've been helping businesses across the country um, to enter and win awards. So, yeah, we've got a really good hit rate there, which I'm quite proud of. Um, and I think, yeah, it just really helps businesses because, um, again, it's not just a case of you win an award. That's, that's great. 
Um, it's the whole process. So if you enter the awards and you're through to the finals, then that's something you can talk about to say you've made finalist status. When you go to the awards on the evening, you're in a room full of hundreds of people. Lots of them probably have never heard of you before. So that's another good way to get you in front of people in your industry or in your location. Um, so yeah, they, they're like, oh, who's that? And then they might look you up. Um, and then if you're lucky enough to win the award, we can do some PR around that so that we're getting you mentioned in newspapers and magazines, maybe on the radio, talking about your business, why you've won the award, what your achievements are. And um, yeah, they're just a really great way of getting yourself in front of lots of people and also talking about the good things that you're doing. And aside from that, they're normally really good events as well. It's a, it's a good night out and it's... Um, a great team building thing if you've got a team as well it's a way of showing that you appreciate them that you, whatever it is you've achieved to get that far that you've done it together and this is your way of thanking them as well first of all i think is resilience is key i was really surprised at how much um sort of just generally your mood and how it affects your business if you're having a bit of a a dip um emotionally mental health wise or whatever um, it really does kind of impact your business. Um, so I think yeah, being resilient and recognising when you're at your kind of peak performance and when maybe you're not and listening to your gut as well, um, that's something that I learned as well. I think running a business by yourself as well is quite hard because you constantly question your decision making. You think, oh, am I doing the right thing? Would so-and-so do this? Um, so I think, yeah, sometimes just listen to your gut and you normally find that you sort of circumnavigate and go back to what your original instinct or... Um, yeah, what your original thoughts were. So I think, yeah, resilience, listen to your gut. Um, yeah, and I think just be kind to yourself as well. Um, there's that whole compare and despair thing. You'll always find people that are doing what you do or something similar. And whilst competition's healthy and it might motivate you to make changes to your business, um, I think sometimes yeah, it can make you feel worse. <laughs> so it's just sort of stay in your own lane. Um, you can still grow phenomenally at your own pace. Um, have your initial why, keep that in the front of your mind and just, yeah, just keep going. <laughs>
like the subconscious mind is so much more powerful than the conscious mind. And then some of those beliefs then are there because they affect our thinking and our behavior. And some, sometimes they are kind of preventing us from living the way we want to live. So in RTT, using those, all those methods that we have, we can kind of in hypnosis focus inwardly and find the root cause and the reason of those beliefs that we formed in childhood or, or later in life that are hindering our lives at the moment and then kind of it's transform them. It's like your computer has outdated programs without you realizing but it's really affecting your kind of uh, yeah how your computer is working so in our tt you can just go and update those computer programs so i have like a background of traveling for many many years following my husband who was a diplomat so my life was like kind of constant move from one country to another, settle down and then get ready for the next move. So when we in 2019 moved back to UK, then during the COVID, I started to become a hypnotherapist or RTT therapist and hypnotherapist and then started from there slowly then. So what is it now to 2024? Probably about three years I've been doing it, three or four years. And what inspired you to, to go into hypnotherapy and RTT? So I have always been interested in alternative therapies and way long time ago in my 20s in Finland I did study quite a few different, different alternative therapies and, but then went into teaching which I then did when we were traveling around and uh, so yeah then when we came back and we finally kind of decided that no more moving around we're going to stay here then I kind of finally thought that now I can do something for myself and then whilst Covid came and it wasn't you know you were stuck at home it's like I, I had done hypno before I had my kids I did hypno birthing just for my and I had my children with hypnobirthing which was amazing so hypnotherapy has always been kind of in my I've known about it and I've used it for myself so yeah now I just wanted to start doing it to help others and when I became uh, kind of finally became the hypnotherapist I first did it for my friends and people I knew for like free for a few and then started taking sort of small small fees so it was like and then it started growing from there then I get then people would recommend me and and so it was kind of a slow slow but a slow movement or how do you say it to be, start properly running it as a business and and making it pay pay my living as well yeah probably people like me who are more in in therapy and helping people and sort of not business minded so i knew nothing absolutely nothing about building a business or running a business do you know anything about any laws or tax so anything so it's all been a challenge I'm trying to learn and and yeah find out about things asking other people <laughs> asking for help uh yeah that's probably the biggest well if it's something you're passionate about i think you really should go for it ask for help find out courses and things that can help you, yeah. Even if you're not working on your business, it's on your mind a lot. So that can be stressful. Also, my husband is now, he is away, he's posted to a dangerous place. So we're staying here and he's away. So yeah, there's a lot that I need to be doing at home as well by myself. and. But, I don't know, you just somehow do it. <laughs> uh, 
uh, ask for help, <laughs> be organized uh, and follow your heart. That's just actually one of my favorite is help people uh, with confidence, especially women, because a lot of women have lost so much confidence, you know, when you've had kids so stayed home and all that sort of stuff, going back to work. So, yeah, yes, I can. And usually people who do come for me, they have the desire to change, you know, because you can't help somebody who who's not that open-minded, who's not, doesn't want to change, but they don't usually come to me. <laughs> So for me, it's probably not that massive change because I, I was kind of doing more agency work. So I was kind of just choosing my times anyway before that because I, we'd been traveling and moving so many times. So I wasn't used to in one sort of job that I'd been doing for, for a long, long time. But yeah, it can be hard to find, kind of make yourself be motivated to do the stuff you need to do that you don't want to do. That is really hard. I love the freedom to make my own decisions. I love the fact that there isn't somebody looking at the clock and saying, you have exactly 30 minutes for lunch. I'm a very slow eater. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. And I don't mind, sometimes I work late at the evenings because I may have clients who are in the US and we're doing a session through Zoom. It doesn't matter because I can then have a later start next day because I've chosen so. So I think that is the best thing for me about it is the freedom to do what I want when I want. Because I, I, probably for me, it was because I had already quite a big network of friends I knew because we had traveled so much. So that's how I sort of got. And then obviously my friends, so I, I were, we lived in DC, for example, for four years and I worked uh, and lived in a very international uh, community. So I worked in an international school and all those people who I knew there, then they're also very transient people. So they have moved all over the place as well. So I have people all around the world. So I have had clients in US, sometimes in, in Australia and all sorts of places. I think for me it's probably the fact that you, you have to kind of be jack of all trades and although I love doing the, I, I love the therapy and helping people but then all of a sudden you have to be able to do marketing and video editing and, and voiceovers and all sorts like recently I've been because with the, the therapy, hypnotherapy and the RCT, I do like recordings for clients to listen to. And now I've got a new, I've been learning to use Audible and I'm like, oh my God, why is it so hard? Because <laughs> I know not, I'm not a technical person. So yeah, there's just so much you have to learn all the time. I've always, uh, I've always been interested in alternative therapies and I always have had like a real desire to help people and uh, yeah it's just come from there and I just want to, it just brings me so much joy when you kind of can help someone and see the difference that is made and you know when they tell you that oh you know oh my god I've, I've Somebody who was like too scared to, who could, couldn't drive anywhere, for example, had to be driven everywhere. And then she had a session with me and then uh, next week drove to Heathrow. And like, you know, that's it's like, oh my God, my life's changed. I can now go to places. I'm independent. And, you know, so that's, that is, yeah, it's, that's just amazing.
I've started to do these sort of small events, which for now have been free, uh, where I kind of talk about, pick a, like a workshops, like pick a, a topic that I know that people suffer, suffer from, like anxiety or uh, procrastination, self sabotage and stuff like that. And then I explain like what kind of programming there can be behind it. And then we do, I use also, I learn, I'm learning all the time, other new methods as well. So then we do, I use a lot of EFT, emotion freedom technique, is this tapping, which is brilliant way to release stuff. And uh, then we do like a hypnosis, guided hypnosis. And those events are lovely because people just really go, it's just an hour of, releasing things and and yeah and then they can back come back to me and say how much they enjoyed it and how it's helped i've had clients who not necessarily starting own business but people who have like have wanted to get race or or new position and like always struggle to get through interviews or don't have the confidence to go for the jobs or always keep, seem to be failing. I've had sessions with them to really help their confidence and, and speaking in, in interviews and situations like that. And then afterwards they've, they've got the races and they've got the positions. So it's been amazing. So yes, I can really help in, with that as well. Well, so again, there's usually there is a uh, like a subconscious programming behind it that tells you that you've maybe as, as a child, you've heard something being said, or it can just be the smallest little thing that have made you think that I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as others for whatever reason it is. And definitely there is no reason that you wouldn't be but people and that becomes a sort of background kind of subconscious little program that starts pushing and affecting your uh, you know your behaviors and and like people even say that they have that imposter syndrome so they realize that it's there so yeah in in RTT we'll go back in hypnosis and the brilliant thing is that all I need to do is kind of guide you and ask you questions and you completely start, you kind of get this inward focus and can speak to the subconscious mind and it always comes up with reasons, the root causes. And then it's really easy to change because now usually there's stuff that have beliefs that you formed in childhood. Maybe you've been seven or five or eight or whatever and now as an with an adult understanding you can look at that and like well yes at the age of seven I might have thought that but that makes no sense that's not real and that's not true and then you can let go of it and release it but it's hard to release if you don't know where it's come from you can't with your conscious mind if you try and think about it it's not real it's not true the subconscious mind is 95% more powerful than the conscious mind. We all want the bare necessities of life. To have a place we can call home. To have a family that's happy and united. To have protection for your loved ones. To have a good job where you're valued. But life is full of ups and downs, and sometimes we all need a bit of friendly legal expertise to smooth things out. Visit our website to find out more. Wilson Brown Solicitors. We're all the help you need.
I am Millie Fife. I am the founder of No Fuss Meals for Busy Parents, which is a community interest company that helps to provide a connection between food grown in the UK and how to make tasty meals from scratch. We're here today at home on our farm. This is Orchard Farm here in Yelvertoft um, to the northwest of Northamptonshire. So Daventry would be our closest town. And I have been in business for... Ooh, four years as a marketing business so sort of taking back after having the children I started um, doing a small amount of marketing and PR for lots of food and farming businesses that's developed um, quite a lot over the years and on the side I have been interviewing farmers and food producers about what they grow and produce for a podcast and a food blog which has now evolved into a community interest company where I'm able to work with other stakeholders and local businesses to um, deliver really the, the the vision or the mission that children will come away from ultra processed food and will be able to empower people to cook from scratch using produce that is grown and produced in Northamptonshire and locally um, within the British Isles. What I love most about running my own business is that I am a free range human. Uh, I remember reading a book, um, I think of a similar title a few years ago while I was uh, still in full time employment. And because I'm a very creative person and I'm a people person, I often would get frustrated when I was working for various other businesses and things. And actually now having children that are school age now they're five and six they um, obviously come first and I want to be that parent that is at the assembly at the school fete um, being there for pick up and drop off because when I was in full-time employment I was never at home um, and I was working long hours and actually working or running my own business as, a, as an entrepreneur I'm in control of my own destiny and I can work the hours I want to work um, the hours are long and, <laughs> and you do work around family life but I find it really rewarding um, and I really feel like I'm making a difference um, to the people that I work with and um, the, the mission on behalf of the community interest company. I started my business journey after having the children. I'd finished my maternity leave and I really didn't want to go back to full-time employment. I wanted to try and find a way to um, be there for my children, but also bring in an income and um, do something meaningful with my time. And I slowly sort of built up a bit of a client base. So before the roles that I was working in were very much in marketing, PR and comms. So I've always had that kind of um, background relationship building and um, collaborating with other businesses and organisations. So it was a natural fit for me. And really it's kind of diversified or, or, or kind of grown from there really and um, I've been successful with awards and um, applying for grants and things to help build up my business and through that the community interest company was born just over a year ago after I attended a leadership course at Windsor Castle and that really helped me to kind of reflect on where I've come from and kind of look forward and you know, what are my priorities where is my moral compass you know what 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 is my motivation and kind of then trying to sort of piece that all together into something that kind of reflects what I really enjoy um and so yeah I, I don't want to say I'm living the dream <laughs> but uh, you know it, it is trying to strike that work-life balance and I could I could do a lot more but then something else has got to give um, and I could work a lot more hours but then I'd have to pay for a lot more childcare and so it, it's kind of finding, finding that balance really um, and I think within entrepreneurship you kind of look at your different options and where you can grow and how you can kind of um, tiptoe around things and you, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of knocks, I've had a lot of bumps in the road as well and I try and remain positive, I'm quite a sunny you know sunny disposition and, and and really get on with people but actually you know it, it can be a challenge and running your own business can be quite isolating quite lonely um but actually when you start to talk to other people you realize that they're in a similar boat as well we just don't talk about it enough and uh 
you know there's lots of inspiring people that I look up to and people say that I'm an inspiring person because of the things that I do so that keeps me motivated and keeping me wanting to you know wake up get the kids off to school and then think right what am I going to do today well I already know what I'm going to do today because I'm quite efficient with my time um and I think again that's one of my um things that keeps me kind of um forward looking and you know trying to be organized and um you utilize my time effectively when I, when i when i first started my pr and marketing business i was just doing you know a few favors for people really and then someone I, yeah i guess it's having that phone call from somebody who's seen some social media content i've created and gone oh i'm a trustee of this charity could you help us with this project we have allocated some budget for this would you like that and to be honest i'm just sort of thinking back because of the hard work and the name that i've um you know the credibility and the exposure i don't think i've ever had to kind of promote and say i'm looking for work or i need to gather clients um because they've all it's all happened through word of mouth eventually because the nature of the work that I'm doing I'm doing a lot on Instagram on Facebook on TikTok um on LinkedIn and so through a couple of posts here and there people have really started to notice and I don't know whether or not I don't want to say that's luck because I think that's sort of running me down a little bit because actually the work that I do you know I've come to realize that actually yeah I'm pretty good at what I do and so that's why people are drawn to me because I do deliver um so yeah having having inquiries from people who have seen things that I've done and said can you do that for me is you know that that's it, it's a real real big boost when someone says that and then when they say oh and we've allocated x amount of money or well now I can say this is my rate are you happy with that because again like people will start and they'll say oh can you do this and it will be a bit of pocket money <laughs> but then you're a bit like yeah if you're going to make this actually pay and you've got your business overheads and things like that you've got to start and think well what is the value and obviously the experience that I've gained over time and um you know, I am one of the leaders, especially within agriculture, in terms of digital marketing and social media. So I am one of the go-to people. So therefore, that comes at a premium. Um, and so, yeah, it's um, it's a hell of a boost. So yeah, it's it's what yeah, what's make makes my world go round. That's for sure. Yeah, anyone who wants to start a business, there's a lot of information out there. Um, there's a lot of organisations. Um, I'm thinking, you know, within Northamptonshire, for example, uh, depending on what type of business, you know, you've got obviously the, the, the local councils have got a lot of resource. You've got the BIPC that have got a lot of resource. Networking groups as well, like NMBN, are fantastic because you can engage with other business people. It's, it's kind of looking at... What is your unique selling point? What makes you different from everybody else? Because if you wake up one morning and go, oh, I've got an idea. It's all very well having that idea. But in order to make that idea into something that's going to make you money, you know, you might start doing it as a little bit of a side hustle in your spare time. Um, and then you build that up over time. And then you make that leap from full time employment to a business which to be honest I think that's a lot of people's journey um that they it just and I mean that's that's how the CIC started for me it was just something that I did in my spare time as a bit of a creative outlet and over the last few years it's really grown um and I'm kind of at that point really where I'm still doing my marketing but I'm also doing my CIC work because it's the marketing at the moment that's making me um, my living um, and eventually the CIC will start to generate um, an income which can employ me or somebody else to help me um, but it's kind of looking at the biggest bigger picture you know putting a business plan together you know how are you going to generate an income what makes you different how much are you going to charge is it a service or a product or um, you know how are you going to get that to market um, who are your target audience you know all those sorts of questions you need to be asking yourself and putting down in your business plan 
plan um, but also then you know thinking about your own unique brand as well you know why would people buy from you do you have a story um, behind that because people buy from people um, and for me you know that's um, part of my motivation really I'm a member of the farming community and I used to work for a farming charity so I know some of the hardships that for the farming community face and as a mum trying to cook for her own children I'm trying to um, teach them about what grows in this country and getting them to eat healthy food and so sort of trying to marry up those sort of two uh, passions of mine um, in a way that makes it um, engaging and that people want to have a go themselves. Um, that for me is really empowering and um, it's just trying to work out how I can monetize that really <laughs> because it is, it is a good cause but uh, um, it, yeah, it, it's something that needs to generate an income. So it's it's been a been a, a tough road, but it's also um, something that I think anyone can learn from. And yeah, jumping on the internet, finding all that information is um, is definitely uh, something that anyone can do if they want to start up in business. Something I learned quite early on, and so my life motto is dare to be different, and I don't like to follow what everyone else does I like to do things slightly different but somebody really wise said to me if you don't ask you don't get and a few years ago um, I put a lot of my recipes together into an e-cookery book and I started selling that on Amazon on Kindle and also through my website and before I put it together I thought oh it'd be really good to get some kind of endorsement and having worked for various charities and good causes and I volunteered for lots of different good causes I've worked quite a lot with HRH the Princess Royal and so I emailed her office and said what I was trying to achieve and would would the princess be interested in supporting the book and a few weeks later I received a letter from Buckingham Palace from Princess Anne herself with a foreword for my book so if you don't ask you don't get so that one email allowed me to obviously get the endorsement, the kudos that actually a member of the royal family thinks I'm I'm all right. <laughs> so yeah, so they, and and then obviously um, some of the, I don't some some of the awards that have come my way as a result of um, my achievements. Really, you know, that's that's a big sort of pat on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder, you know, and, and a real lift because again, you know, you, you kind of just think you're doing okay, but if other people think you're doing okay, that makes it even better. So, and the PR that comes with that and everything else. Um, and then all of a sudden that start to attract sponsors and, um, and paid partnerships and things like that. So, yeah, so it is, it, you know, I'm, it's my, one of my mottos is, yeah, if you don't ask, you don't get. One of the things that I've always been a huge advocate of is obviously um, doing volunteer work um, to gain that credibility and that experience, especially in um, the area in which you're trying to work as a business. So, for example, I write for the local newspapers. I do a, a guest column with the Daventry Express and the Rugby Advertiser where I'm sharing my recipes and, um, and now they're calling me the local food guru. Um, I'm now going on to create a radio show with N Live Radio. Again, that's a voluntary thing, but it's provided me with new skills and opportunities. I really enjoy interviewing people myself and finding out those nuggets of information. But again, that will hopefully bring along um, key sponsors or at least improve, you know, increase my profile further. So, you know, sometimes doing things like that for good causes gives you the experience that you need or the exposure that you need to help um, Gain, gain a bit more traction in your own business. At Wilson Brown, our family law team deals with all things concerning relationships and what happens when they break down. We deal with everything from disputes about the family home and other assets to how your children are cared for. With all options considered, including mediation, we'll help you consider the needs of everyone involved and find the best way forward, so you can make the right decisions for the future. With Wilson Brown Solicitors, we're all the help you need.
So I'm Rupert Turton from Action Coach Oakham and Kettering, where we work with business owners and business leaders to help them achieve their goals and uh, I suppose actually get the life that they want out of their business. So it's let's face it, if you start a business and the pain you put in place to get your business going, there's got to be something in it for you. So it's working out what that is and why they've done it in the first place. Um, it wasn't really a single inspiration. I'd wanted to have my own business to be self-employed for a while. So it was more a combination of circumstances. So my kids left home and uh, went off into the great wide world. So we were no longer paying for their education and getting them through university. Uh, with the house we are in, with uh, just the two of us was too big, so we'd already decided to downsize. And also the area we're living in was not really where we wanted to finish up, so it was time to move somewhere else. And we coupled that with the fact that the job I was doing at the time uh, in corporate, um, they were looking for people to take redundancy, so I put my hand up. And it was all of those came together, which, which led to us starting Action Coach Oakham and Kettering. In some ways, interesting and challenging. In other ways, a lot of the stuff you get from corporate is uh, the same into a small business. Not all small businesses do it. I emphasize that now. But the basic principles of planning, budgeting, um, understanding how you're going to market is consistent across all businesses, just on a, a different scale, if you like. And then, of course, the... Uh, the terminology that uh, is used as well, some of the, the acronyms that are used in business really would just confuse people in smaller businesses as well and a lot of our clients. Because we're a franchise, um, a lot of it was provided for us. So some of the things a lot of businesses have to think about, like just setting up the email, setting up the website, um, uh, business cards, stationery, banners, things like that, um, all provided for us plus all the training that goes with it as well. So to get into Action Coach, pretty much spend the first three months in training and learning how to coach and learning the Action Coach system. And then, of course, there's the usual stuff. So having a budget, uh, understanding what your marketing plan is going to look like, just having a plan in general. So it's really just all those little steps you'd expect to put in place to, uh, to get to a business. And I don't think you can underestimate, even with all the planning, how much experience counts to, to getting things going as well. And it's experience that we gained in starting the business. So it's, uh, it's not that anyone can educate you on some of these things. You've got to work it out for yourself a little bit. We have always consistently done social media, but I see that very much as a hygiene factor in the background. The, uh, for years, we've tried, I don't know, five, six times to get telemarketing working for us. We've never had any success with it. Uh, in the end, we've moved much more to uh, fundamentally, actually, events and networking is most of our, our main marketing thrust these days, which seems to be much more successful, which is why we love coming to NBN. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, the actually, the, the odd one, and with the benefit of hindsight, really stupid, was that because we were moving to an area, a new area, we didn't have a business network. So uh, we turned up with pretty much no network um, to speak of. So it was going out and developing that business network, the people we need to know, not just the people we like to work with, but the people we need to know around us. So obviously, we have to have good relationships with accountants and HR people and marketing companies. Uh, we didn't have any of that in place. So if you like, there's a lot of focus in the early years to, uh, to start to build those relationships. I think now, these days we seem to know most of the people we need to know now, which is great. But in the early days, we really had to work hard on, on building that relationship. And I think the other thing was the, um, I had not understood that what I considered to be the basics of running a business are not common knowledge as well. There's an awful lot of quite successful businesses out there who seem to just survive with not, not knowing the basics of how their business operates, not knowing uh, how much money they've got in the bank, how much money they're going to have in the bank in three months' time, not knowing where that money's coming from, not knowing what their marketing plan looks like, not knowing what their recruitment looks like. So much that I just see as basic to running a business that doesn't, just isn't common knowledge out there as well. So differentiation is so important in the business coaching market. There's so many people out there calling themselves business coaches. One of the things that really attracted us to Action Coach as a franchise when we first signed up was that their proven system for building a business. Um, and uh, 
Uh, I think it's so important that we're not just winging it. We're, we actually do know what we do. We have a structure behind the work that we do with the clients. Um, and then beyond that, I know it sounds a little bit self-indulgent, but it's the training that the coaches go through. So action coach view is very much, if you've got great coaches, we'll have a great business. Uh, obviously, to be a great coach, you have to work at that. And there's an awful lot of time spent invested in us, I suppose, not spent, invested in us in developing our skills. So it's everything from the uh, the master classes that Action Coach runs for us every every quarter. Uh, it's the um, morning webinar where we get to talk to, well, Monday morning webinar where we talk about a particular theme. Um, and then the rest of the week we have uh, workshops, if you like, open coaching sessions where a bunch of coaches are on there and we just exchange ideas for, uh, for now every morning. So much uh, great ideas comes from that as well things that I can then use with the clients and sometimes it just sparks something in your head and you see how it relates to your clients um, and then of course we have coaches um, to help us develop as well uh, but all of this it shows through in the in the level of coaching that we provide it's also very difficult to explain to somebody who's never experienced it on the other side as well so unless you're one of our clients you don't see the benefit that, uh, that that's delivering to you. There's two levels to this as well, actually, because in what we do, we have the, the coaching, but we also have the areas that the clients are working in as well. So if I look at the coaching, actually back to the training, back to the coaching, back to the working with us and the masterclasses, all of those sort of things. Plus, uh, I do an awful lot of reading, generally have an audio book on the go in the car as well. It's different sources of, uh, of education for us and constantly working on building our knowledge base. The other side of that, of course, is the clients. Now, the clients, uh, obviously, we read stuff about them. We see things in the papers. Sometimes we can go and read up. I mean, it is, let's face it, incredibly easy these days to go and find out a particular in industry just by looking at the, the internet. But then beyond that, there's also the... Um, the fact that the clients are the experts in their area. So we don't necessarily need to know about their the details of their business. That's that area of expertise. And let's face it, most of the time, they've been very successful getting to that point of view or uh, to that point already where they have built the business. Um, and actually what we're doing is then helping them get an even better business, moving it even faster forward. Yeah, work-life balance is an interesting concept because I'd be lying if I said I work nine to five because let's face it, it's not unusual. I mean, there's an event first thing this morning. I've got one this evening. Uh, I'm pretty much on a 14 hour day today. But then the flip side is that if I have spare time during the day, I'll go off and do things I want to do. So it's not unusual that you'll see I've gone cycling for the afternoon or we've taken the Friday off to go away for the weekend and things like that. So I don't see it as work-life balance. I see it as work-life integration. I'm pretty much, so my hours are probably the same as most people with their own business. Well, I'm not up in the 60, 80 hour category, but um, it's, it's a good working week. But actually, it's how you integrate that with the rest of your life as well and work more in a way that suits me than in a way that I'm forced to by the, by the shape of the business as well. So, yeah, I wouldn't say it's work life balance. I'd say definitely work life integration. Oh, well, first one. I suppose actually let's not underestimate still being in business after five years. 80% of businesses don't make it to this point. So we've done pretty good from that point of view and long may it continue. Uh, secondly, it's the, actually I think the impact we are now seeing on the people we're working with and the community that is building up uh, around us as a business as well, I think is actually really, well, it's a real credit to us and the work we've put in. I just, um, and I, I think that's absolutely brilliant as well. It's quite nice. You must see the same as well, Simon. But when you have a conversation with somebody and you see the output of it and the benefit of it a couple of weeks later, that's a really good feeling to, uh, to have that nice little kick. Makes you want to get up in the morning. I feel coaching should be one of those things that all businesses have along with their lawyers and their accountants and their HR people. I think it's that fundamental, the difference it makes. I think um, there's a bit of a, an English attitude of, I've got a business, I know everything, it's going okay, what can you teach me? And yet, uh, I suppose I come at this from the opposite angle in that, uh, well, I learn stuff every day and I'm, I'm specialising in it, so everybody else must be able to, to take something as well. Um, and then what can we offer clients? Well, we, we, often, uh, we have events most months now, um, which we're giving away some sort of uh, training, um, usually for a nominal fee or for uh, 
uh, all for free in some instances as well. We've got the event coming up with you at the, the end of the year as well. So uh, this is a, a basic level of what we're giving out. We're in the process of launching a new club for new business owners over a 12 week period. So um, just watch this space, something will be happening there. And the whole point behind that is we're trying to make it as cheap as possible for the clients, but as beneficial for them to really get them in there and get them rolling. And then we get into the, um, the actual coaching itself. So every business should have a plan. Every business should be updating that plan at least every quarter. Um, we are, uh, for the real start out businesses, we do the, we call it nine, uh, co uh, growth club, which is our 90 day planning activity. Um, and in between we offer, uh, for various, various client to client by the way, but we offer uh, intermittent uh, coaching sessions in between. So actually don't leave it three months before you see us again, come in and we'll give you a, a bit of accountability and update in between times. And then we get into one-to-one -one coaching, which more expensive, but I think it depends on where you're trying to get your business to as well. Once we get into one-to-one -one business, we'll also guarantee the results. So in the same way that with your accountant you would expect them to cover their fees in what they save you in tax with coaching uh, we would expect you to cover your investment in coaching with your increased profits within a six-month period and we'll, we'll guarantee that as well first thing be really clear about why you're going into business in the first place because it's a uh, it's a I wouldn't say it's a tough journey, but it's an enjoyable journey, but you need to have a real vision of why you're doing it in the first place. Uh, so get clear on why you're starting the business. Some people start a business just to give them an income, that's fine. If you just want a job, okay, that's why you started your business, that's how you're gonna set it up. If you want to start a business either to sell it at some point in the future or give yourself a passive income, be very clear about that early, early on because that's gonna shape the way your business develops. Uh, secondly, be very clear of your finances and know where not only where the money's coming from, but when it's going to be spent. And don't forget the really important thing. It's not about having a lovely premises all kitted out, great, great office or great shop or whatever you're going to have. But you've also got to market that business because it's you could have the best premises in the world. But if nobody knows you're there, it's really not going to work as a business. And then the third one, let's go with get a business coach. You should, not necessarily a business coach like me, but you should have somebody in the background who is working with you to have the conversations with you that you don't want to have. So, because naturally your friends will want to maintain the friendship they have with you. Your family will want to maintain the relationship they have with you. So they're not going to say the things that you necessarily need to hear to run a business. So find somebody who is going to fulfill that role, uh, which means you've got to choose somebody who is outside of your friendship circle, who's prepared to work with you, mentor you and coach you.